This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. 1. It felt good to put down my detective's badge, at least for a while. Because being a cop in Boulder, Colorado can be like patrolling fantasy land. The city, with its alternative lifestyles and bizarre counterculture, was Mickey Mouse, with Goofy and Dopey in charge. A dozen years on the job, and the surprises just kept coming. I had come into police work with total admiration for the men and women who wore the blue uniform. Born in the small town of Arkadelphia, Arkansas, with a horoscope that said I was extremely tenacious, I grew up respecting the law. My mother died when I was a small boy, and my father moved my sisters and me to Dallas in 1969. While he roamed the nation, raising funds for the March of Dimes, my sister and I grew up under the guidance of a wonderful black woman named Lee Bass, who taught me to treat all people equally. After graduating from the University of Colorado in Boulder, I spent a few years with the nearby Wheat Ridge Police Department, learning my trade, and was awarded a medal for rescuing an elderly couple from a burning building. Eventually, I was assigned to a special investigations unit that introduced me to undercover work. But when the opportunity came in 1991 to join the Boulder PD, with its high salaries and top-of-the-line equipment, I took it and, like Alice in the fairy tale, tumbled through the mirror and into another world. Not long after arriving in Boulder, I noticed the huge number of escort services advertising in the local papers and set up a prostitution sting in the city's nicest hotel. The department had not worked such an operation in twenty years. In no time we nabbed several girls, some pimps, cocaine, cash, and guns. When the newspapers reported the story, city officials quickly declared there was no prostitution problem in Boulder. When I tried to arrange another sting, a memo was posted mandating that unless there were public complaints, we were not to work prostitution. It taught me the early lesson that Boulder did not want its boat rocked. After my first year with the department, I was among several officers who confronted an enraged, psychotic suspect who was waving two butcher knives in a busy downtown intersection on a hot summer day and screaming that someone is going to die. Ranting and out of control, he charged at me, and the decision was textbook. I shot him twice, and still had a struggle putting handcuffs on the fighting, bleeding man. I had become the first BPD officer in over a decade to be involved in a shooting, and got my first real taste of the Boulder County District Attorney's Office. Pete Hofstrom, chief of the felony division, asked me, Couldn't you have just hit him with a stick or something? Using any sort of force against a suspect in Boulder was viewed as extraordinary. Hofstrom's response was typical of the distance between a cop on the street and a prosecutor in the entrenched bureaucracy of the office of the Boulder County District Attorney. We dealt with the law on real terms, while to me they seemed more concerned with justice as some kind of test-tube experiment. In many other jurisdictions, an assistant D.A. would have been among the first to support a street cop in such a life-or-death situation. In Boulder, they wanted me to bop him with a stick. Less than a year later, I had to do it again. As a member of the SWAT team, I was covering fellow officers, trying to apprehend a suicidal, armed suspect who had already shot at his wife. He charged pointing a pistol right at me, and again I had no choice, and brought him down with three quick shots. I was hustled back to the police department for an internal investigation, while Police Chief Tom Kobe rushed to the emergency room bedside of the suspect, consoled him, and told him everything was going to be all right. Officers were embarrassed by the chief's action. I did not expect a commendation because Kobe would not award a decoration to any officer who used deadly force against a citizen. Instead, I was sent off to verbal judo school to learn how to resolve critical situations with words. By then, 
I had begun to understand the locker room talk. When we traded war stories, we shrugged and said, Hey, this is Boulder.